Well, hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Today, we have a very special NASA Marshall guest. Uh, we have the Center Chief Technologist, John Dankovich. So, welcome, uh, D- uh, John Dankovich, to Science Never Stops. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, this year would have marked the 26th anniversary of the NASA Human Exploration Rover Challenge. Uh, how did the Rover Challenge get started? Yeah, so a great question. Uh, really, on the 25th anniversary of Apollo 11, uh, which was July 16th of 1994, uh, NASA started what was called the Great Moon Buggy Race. Uh, the competition has evolved quite a bit since that first race, uh, becoming the Human Exploration Rover Challenge and reducing the length of the course. Uh, really, however, uh, you know, much of the course has really remained the same. Uh, the event is hosted at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. It has been every year since 1996. And the overall goal is to mimic the challenges of the first lunar roving vehicle, uh, which was used on Apollo 15. So you mentioned a little bit about how it worked, but could you explain a little more detail how the competition works and what are some of the rules for the participants? Sure. So, uh, so Rover Challenge is one of the seven Artemis student challenges that are sponsored by NASA's Office of the STEM Engagement and also the Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate. Uh, the teams design and build lunar rovers and other mission task tools to traverse a simulated lunar surface obstacle course limited to eight minutes of virtual oxygen. Uh, the rovers are driven by two students, which is one male and one female, uh, just like the planned Artemis III Lunar South Pole landing mission, which we're having planned for 2024. Uh, the vehicle must go through rigorous engineering assessments and an inspection called the Mission Readiness Review, which is to meet the safety and engineering requirements for the start of the race. Uh, for example, uh, the vehicle must fold into a five-foot cube, much like the original lunar rover needed to fold into its allocated space during the Apollo mission. Uh, during the race, uh, teams will actually earn points for mission tasks such as instrument deployment, spectrograph analysis, and collecting samples, and all of this while limited to those eight minutes to return to the base. But overall, there's actually 17 different awards in both the high school and college divisions. Like for me, one of my favorite examples is the Technology Challenge Award. Uh, being the, ch- the chief technologist, I really like it. I push for innovation. And this award really concentrates on the innovation for a wheel design and fabrication. Uh, this is because rover wheels will encounter differing surfaces such as rock outcroppings, fissures and cracks up to five inches. Uh, we have slopes on the course up to 30 degrees, uh, sand and pebbles, and some of the other planetary features. And so wheeled vehicles enable wide-ranging exploration, but only if their wheels and tires are suitable for the environment. Therefore, wheel technology is a critical element for, for exploration of space. And so with this technology challenges, teams are not allowed to use any commercial solution. Instead, they must focus on creative, uh, and ingenuitive and uh, effective designs that they'll build to have their wheels meet the uh, environmental challenges. Uh, the designs and judging focus on the safety, adaptability of different services, the durability, the traction, stability, performance, and the maneuverability of these. Great. So why would these teams uh, build these human-powered rovers? So how are, how are these building of these Earth-based traveling rovers apply to space-based rovers, like what we use on historical moon, back to the moon, or for our deep space missions to Mars eventually? Yeah, so, you know, the next rover for human exploration is certainly not going to rely on human power, right? Uh, Even though the the new Artemis generation spacesuits uh, do give greater maneuverability to the astronauts, it would certainly be a tall task and an efficient use of the time uh, and their energy, right? And so uh, the choice of human-powered rovers for this competition is not to mimic the lunar rover implementation specifically, but really just to provide some design constraints and also have the team take into account human factors, which includes the comfort, performance, and safety while designing their system. Who all can participate? And uh, where all do the teams come from? Yeah, so uh, so high schools and colleges um, from around the world are eligible to register and compete. Uh, This year, for example, we had 112 teams registered. Uh, That was from 28 different states, plus Puerto Rico, Washington, D.C., and 11 countries. Um, Those countries ranged uh, Bangladesh, Bolivia, uh, Brazil, uh, I think uh, Egypt, Germany, Mexico, Peru, and Singapore. Um, registration is typically open in October, 
and then we culminate with our event, uh, obviously, uh, in April. So how does NASA sponsor these types of challenges for students all around the world and domestically? Sure. So, uh, so the Rover Challenge, you know, as well as those other Artemis student challenges I mentioned, uh, which include, uh, let's say, Student Launch Initiative, uh, Micro G, uh, Suits, The Big Ideas, uh, First Nations Launch, even Lunabotics. Uh, they all seek to inspire the future ranks of scientists, physicians, engineers, and mathematicians. Uh, really, this Artemis generation of explorers who will carry on the nation's mission of discovery in the decades to come. You know, as we know, uh, the Apollo generation really sponsored uh, STEM for a lot of people. We, you know, like um, a lot of us were inspired to enter the fields of aerospace engineering and, and go into these technical fields. And, and the Artemis generation is going to have that same impact. And so Rover Challenge integrates the nation's ambitious plans for solar system exploration with practical engineering skills, innovative design, and real-time decision-making, which complements student classroom STEM curricula. I know Marshall is just as disappointed as the Rocket Center is that the kids didn't get to participate this year. What, what are things that these students that have built these rovers and things that they've done, what well, and worked really hard to do? What is the NASA messaging that was sent to them or that what kind of messaging was given to them for all their hard work and backing them for doing this? Sure. So, um, you know, as we all know, the, the safety and protection of the, of the Rover Challenge student teams, our NASA workforce, and all those supporting the competition is NASA's top priority. And so we regret the need, uh, the need to cancel this year's on-site race. Um, it's also really not just a disappointment for the teams, but for the sponsors, the NASA employees like myself that feed off of that energy we get from the students' shared excitement and passion about engineering and human exploration. And so um, while, while I don't want to diminish the loss of the on-site event, it is essentially only the operational phase of the mission. You know, most of the work that goes into designing, analyzing, fabricating, integrating, and testing of an engineering system for a unique mission all comes well before the countdown clock to launch, right? And so, um, you know, for more than 25 years now, this annual NASA Human Exploration Rover Challenge and its sponsors have encouraged student teams from the United States and around the world to push these limits of innovation and imagine what it would take to explore the moon, Mars, and the worlds of the universe. Uh, all of this has still occurred, right? Um, so while we're disappointed we will not be able to host all the teams at the in-person competition this year, uh, we know that the students have gained significant value from the engineering, the teamwork, and the project tasks they've already completed. And we do recognize and appreciate this hard work. Uh, in fact, the team submitted reports uh, earlier in, in March, and upon returning to work, NASA and the sponsors are gonna conduct a virtual award ceremony to reward the top achievements among the participating teams. Uh, these awards include uh, the Technology Award, which I already mentioned, uh, a Drivetrain Award, a System Safety Award, uh, Best Report, Telemetry uh, Electronics Award, uh, the Neil Armstrong for Best Design, a STEM Engagement Award, and a Task Challenge as well. Uh, in addition, all of the teams are going to receive certificates of completion. Good. So all their hard work's not going in vain. So that's great. So, John, wanted to thank you for joining us this morning for Science Never Stops, and uh, keep up the good work at Marshall, and thank you again for joining us. Yeah, and if you don't mind, uh, before concluding, I really wanted to highlight that, that NASA remains open. You know, the nation's drive for exploration is not diminished as we adapt to this hopefully temporary environment. Uh, this circumstance and this event, you know, uh, specifically makes me think of another rover challenge within the agency right now, and that's the Mars 2020 rover. Uh, before COVID-19, and even more now, uh, the name of the rover, Perseverance, is fitting to represent NASA and the nation as we persevere through this time, uh, continue our drive for exploration, and remain committed to that launch later this July. So without a doubt, you know, we're really looking forward to welcoming back these teams uh, for the 2021 competition. Uh, be looking for that registration again in October. And next year is going to be a special anniversary as we celebrate 50 years of the first lunar roving vehicle. Thank you. Nice. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for that information. And uh, always remember, science never stops.